Today we're going to focus on damping adjusters. As I said in my previous presentation, I'm really at odds with the marketing term fully adjustable suspension. While we've got a reasonable response range on rear clickers and front clickers, it's not magically going to completely alter the character of the bike. However, with what we've got, we'll demonstrate what will set you in the right direction. On the shock absorber, we actually have four adjusters. We have the spring preload adjuster, and we touched on spring preload and sag measurements in our last presentation. And we have two adjusters at the top of the shock. We have a low speed compression adjuster, which is accessed with that Allen headed center screw. And we have a high speed compression adjuster. To adjust the high speed compression adjuster, I've used a spanner that I've cut down. That gives us a really good conception of feel. If you use something big and bulky, you're just not going to get that perception of feel. Don't be afraid to adjust the high speed compression adjuster. It's there about adjusting for bumps, the reactance to bumps. And we're not talking bike speed, we're talking shock shaft speed. High speed compression is moving the shock at very high velocity. Damping is velocity dependent. And the best analogy is the humble fire door closing damper. If you move the door slowly, there's a little bit of resistance. If you try and move it uh, very, very fast, it almost locks up. That's the effect of damping. But basically, if you're riding it on road where you need compliance, you'll have a fairly liberal setting. It'll be wound a reasonable number of turns out to give you reasonable compliance across the bumps on our roads. When you take it to a track day, you need to wind it up a lot. In the case of the R6, we wind it up so it's only three quarters of a turn out. When you're adjusting any damping adjuster, unless expressed otherwise, 99 times out of 100, it's always expressed from winding the adjuster fully in clockwise until it's fully closed off. The reason it's expressed as number of turns uh, from fully closed off is fully closed off is an absolute position where it's completely shut. It's an accurate datum point to express it from. It's never expressed from fully out because fully out is not an accurate datum point. That's fully in. We want three quarters of a turn for track day use, which we've established with testing with this model, with our valving specs. That's our track day setting. If you're riding it on the road and you want more bump compliance, you'd come out maybe half to one turn. But you've always got a factory default setting you can go back to. Normally on the racetrack, we set it to that setting and we leave it. With the low speed compression adjuster, which on these is an Allen headed screw, we make up our own Allen headed driver, which again gives us a good perception of feel. If you use an Allen key, a standard Allen key, you don't normally get the perception of feel you're looking for. Again, it's expressed as number of clicks out from fully closed off. So we've just received the shock for service. I don't know where it's adjusted to, but we'll wind it all the way in. And then number of clicks out. And for example, on this, we'll start maybe at 10 clicks out. And you can feel those. If you're using, a say, a T-bar Allen drive with a lot of leverage on it, you're not going to feel those declinks detent clicks that accurately. Many of these low speed adjusters of course will have a standard screwdriver blade slot so they all vary. But it's very important you have a perception of feel. Low speed damping is perhaps the most significant adjuster as far as giving you ride height control. If your bike is squatting excessively coming off the turns it's not necessarily about spring preload. While it's an oversimplistic way to state it, springs are about position, damping is about controlling rate of change of position. And that is really what affects squat. If you've found you've had to wind a long way in and the bike's still squatting coming off the turns, it's got to be revalved by a professional. Simple as that. We now move to the rebound adjuster. 
Now, with track days, there are a lot of people that are giving otherwise well-meaning advice, saying just wind everything up. Now, in fairness, that's within sensible limits, is reasonably true for winding up spring preload and increasing compression damping to give you good ride height control, but is an absolute no-no with rebound damping. Now, on most traditional shocks, single tube displacement shocks like this R6 shock, the rebound adjuster is at the very bottom of the shock. It basically adjusts the bypass bleed inside the shaft and affects the return speed of the shock. We can go to a track day, bounce on say 20 bikes, and I guarantee at least half of them will have rebound damping that is so slow, I really worry about the guys crashing their bikes. In my own opinion, having rebound that is too slow is the biggest single cause of crashing. Now the reason for that is even if you're riding on a track that otherwise appears to be smooth, you've got to really think about the dynamics of riding over a bump. When you ride over a bump, the shock compresses and that's controlled by the compression damping. But to every bump, there is a down ramp. So it then makes sense that the shock and the forks have to extend fast enough so that the rear wheel finds the down ramp of the bump. Suspension works in both directions. With rebound damping, general rule of thumb that we express is you make the rebound damping as fast as possible without having after cycles or instability like in an old Cadillac car.